is going on guys? It is Brian and Jack from Simple Man's Comics where we are helping to amplify your comic book collection through integrity and community. This is the Bolo Show. We're going to recap the week's hottest releases. We're talking first appearances. We're talking reader buzz. We're talking variant buzz. But before we get into that, we just launched last night a new video on the channel. Three up, three down. It's the second one in a new series, isn't it Jack? Absolutely. We're really excited about this. We're giving you three hot picks and three cold picks that are trending right now on the secondary market. And you may have noticed a little promo before that episode started. And it is about my brand new tech service where you can join Bolo Nation and get exclusive bolos and content texted directly to your mobile device. All you have to do is text 803-200-2720 to join. Right. And with that being said, we're going to go right into this week's bolo list. As we always say, if this is your first time here, or just wondering what that bolo list is. Bolo stands for Be On The Lookout. This comes out every Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, has all the new comic book day books that you should have on your radar. This isn't a list that's going to make you rich. This is just stuff that you should be aware of. All that reader buzz that's going across social media. First appearances, some of those variants people are looking for. And then, of course, Jack's long-term play. Right, Jack? Absolutely. My favorite segment of the show. And we're going to go right into it right now, starting with first appearances. And the first appearance we're going to talk about is Absolute Carnage Weapon Plus. Right. Now, these um, tie-ins to Absolute Carnage have been kind of hit or miss. Depends on what you're reading. I really enjoyed this one, Brian. I got a chance to read this one this morning. I thought it was real good. It really reminded me of that like web of venom uh kind of like that vietnam-esque story here you get a little backstory on the weapon five program um and you know if you're not familiar we, obviously there's a lot of weapons weapon x is of course wolverine um and we kind of get into a little weapon h appearance uh pr the prior to becoming weapon h um and he meets kind of it looks like a former uh it's a fellow officer, looks like kind of a former commander, who you find out is Weapon is Weapon 5 or Weapon V. Um, depends on how you want to pronounce that. That's kind of like one of those uh, House of X, House of 10 sort of situations. But um, really cool. It's a great panel where he kind of uh, symbiotes up. Um, Weapon, Weapon 5 kind of was most popularized by Agent Venom. Flash Thompson, that may be where most people are familiar with him. But this was an interesting issue. It's actually one of those issues I would like to like to see more of this story. I, I don't know if they're going to continue it at all, but I thought it was, it was real good. Um, I did see a comment on Facebook where a reader said they're waiting for that second print where you get that Weapon 5 cover appearance. I think that that would do very well. I do like the Scalera Codex variant, but the cover A kind of reminds me of my childhood. Go ahead, ask me why. Why? Because all those faces reminds me of school when you used to play that game MASH. <laughs> M-A-S-H at the top. If you're not an 80s kid, you wouldn't understand. But yeah, look it up. MASH. It was an awesome game. <laughs> Moving on. It's been a long day. But the next one we're going to talk about for first appearances was Green Lantern Black Stars number one. I was able to read a couple books this is new comic book day. This video is pre-recorded in case you were wondering. So this is Wednesday night. I was able to read this book. I have to go back and reread it because it kind of caught me up. I didn't really completely follow it. I followed it, but I was also going, what the heck's going on? But still a good read. I enjoyed the part where she was like, was it let it rain fire or something? And they just basically took out everything. Spoiler alert. But great book. First appearance. But we also found something else about this, right, Jack? Isn't this like an Elseworlds type story? Yeah. So, like, Brian read it. I read it. Um, we're both big Green Lantern fans. So this is going to be one of the first things we kind of run to. And this was a book that, dating back to when we talked about it on Last Call, that I think we were both excited to read. Um, I've mentioned before, man, you shoot me all you want, but Grant Morrison's not my favorite writer. Um, he's a little complicated. And this was a book where when I was reading it, I was kind of like, where? What is going on? And I kind of... Uh, did some research and you know there's a break in between the first what they're calling the first season of green lantern the first 12 issues in the second season um liam sharp the artist needed a break so while yes this is tying up some storylines and it features characters from the first 
season of Green of Green Lantern. This is kind of an alternate universe story. But the Black Stars, they're a police force similar to the Dark Stars. But while the Dark Stars, who you may be familiar with, um, you know, they're kind of looking to kind of lock up people who are breaking kind of intergalactic law. Um, the Black Stars are trying to convert. Um, so it has kind of like that, like, religious conversion kind of tone to it. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought I, I like these Hal Jordan villain parallax stories. I think they they're entertaining. Um, I think it's one of the things that makes Hal Jordan a real dynamic character and not kind of like your run of the mill, um, you know, goody goody here superhero. Um, so I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm excited to read the next one. Definitely. Uh, it's definitely one that I think I would have considered for the long-term play if it wasn't for the whole alternate universe thing. But again, we've got that HBO show coming to um, coming to uh, coming soon with Star. It's a Green Lantern show, and we really don't know what the topic is going to be. Um, and HBO, you'll have to it's state, on the HBO Max streaming service. Yeah, right? HBO Max streaming service, and we and we don't know what the you know what what source material they're going to pull from yet. Um, and a little shameless plug for the Simpleman's Comics YouTube channel. Stay tuned after this show where we're going to have the second installment of the Back Issue Bolo show. And this one is all about Green Lantern. So we are going to kind of delve into some popular issues and some possible topics for the show. And you never know. Black Stars is something they could pull from one day. But because we're just unsure, it wasn't one I decided to go with for the long-term play. But I enjoyed it. It was a great read. And let us know in the comment section if you were able to read this and what did you think. Right. And this is what, a three-issue miniseries? Yep, three-issue miniseries. Uh, should be a, a quick and digestible read. All right. And that's going to wrap up our first appearances for this week. But real quick, before we get into that Reader Buzz section, do us a favor, click that thumbs up button. And if you haven't done so, please consider subscribing. And that way you'll get notified when future videos hit this channel. And we're going to go right now into the Reader Buzz section. This is probably one of the bigger books that was on a lot of people's list. And we're talking about that return of Scott Snyder with Undiscovered Country Number 1. This is what Scott Snyder, Charles Sewell, Giuseppe Comancoli talking about like an all-star team. But yeah. we also talked about this book before. We had micro content on it where we were really looking forward to the story. But we're telling people that we're looking for it from a speculation or a flipper standpoint kind of stay away from this because it's a lot of big print run and there are so many store exclusive variants for this right so as a channel we're moving beyond just speculation talk we want to be um more diversified we've obviously had reader buzz as something that's been um paramount to what brian and i've been doing ever since we kind of linked up last january um having said that we know that there's a portion of our community that wants that speculation information so as brian mentioned during last call we just kind of brought up the fact that the fact that this book was optioned before its release and before the foc date we knew that this was going to have an astronomical print run on top of that there were several store variants as brian mentioned and not only store variants brian there's a number of convention variants that image put out themselves as well as like an ash can and preview book and things like that so we knew the waters were going to be muddied on this. And it doesn't cease to amaze me that we still saw people posting today on social media saying, oh, man, I can't even sell this book for cover price online. Yeah. You know, that's why we said on the last call, um, and it's, it's one of those things where it's like the last call isn't a, a 10 book pump. We're, we're trying to honestly give you our opinions on the market and the books as we see them. We view ourselves kind of like sports talk radio for comics. And this was kind of our – our take on this book, it was no slam of this book. Brian, as Brian just mentioned, he was excited for this book, as am I. Um, this is a series that I think could be amazing. I love the premise of it. Having said that, there are just some things that in, in the nine or so years that Brian and I have been involved in any sort of speculation we've seen before, and we knew to steer clear from this from that perspective. Right. I haven't had my opportunity to read this yet. I did pick it up, so I'm really looking forward to it. Love Scott Snyder as a writer. Big fan of Giuseppe Comancoli's art, so really looking forward to reading this. But, as Jack just said, it's one of those things to kind of look out for. And 
I think we said enough about it. Let us know in the comments. Did you read it? What did you think of it? I, without reading it, without with reading the synopsis and everything like that, I kind of put it in that same bucket as, say, like Manifest Destiny, East of West, those type stories. And that's what's really got me excited to read it. But the next book we're going to talk about on the Reader Buzz is Legion of Superheroes number one. This actually had four different covers for it, including that blank and then the regular cover. Which is kind of surprising, especially from DC, and you're used to seeing an A and a B cover, but here we have more than that. And we also talked about this on the last call as well, right? Right, and you just you just literally lobbed one up for me, because I was just going to say, DC's putting a lot of effort and work into marketing this. And usually I say follow the money, right? So when a company's putting that kind of effort into it, it, it tends to be something where you're going to see success. Um, when we talked about books like Once in Future and... Um, and uh, something's killing the children from boom. That was our logic, right? That they're putting so much energy and effort into marketing that these have to be successful. And, and that's why we've said the same about next week's release of Folklords. This is no different from D DC Comics. <coughs> Excuse me. Having said that, it doesn't seem to be resonating with the market and with the community, Brian. Um, I'm not seeing a lot of love from readers. And again, let me know in the comments if you read this. I, full disclosure, I did not read this yet. It's on my pile. It's not one I've gotten to yet. It's also not a property that I am honestly consider myself a fan of. It's something I'm trying to get into for the first time. I've read like the, the miniseries, the Millennium one, and uh, I, I'm trying to get into it because I keep getting told by people who are people I respect and longtime people in the comics industry, like, no, like Legion of Superheroes is the shit you need to read that um but i haven't gotten to that point where it's really resonated with me and i think that that's why you, you see the four covers which brian's absolutely right it's not typical of dc and how they're doing things now but it, it just shows the energy and effort they're putting into marketing this book it's a brian michael bendis property and um, we've talked about the way that they've put energy and effort into marketing him as an entity so yeah, and he's we'll he's, see. he's known as like that slow burn type writer so yeah. I expect there to be first appearances throughout the series. I expect um, there to be some buzz at some point. But thus far, I think it's underwhelming what DC would hope for. Right. This is one I didn't pick up, but I plan to actually read digitally. And then if I do enjoy it, I'll go back and pick up the floppy for it. <laughs> but, but this next book definitely picked up, and that's heist number one from vault comics we often show vault love on this channel and for good reasons they write good stories heist number one haven't had a chance to read it yet they had the regular cover they had that homage cover but then we also on the far right have that exclusive variant from our good friends at comicbookinvest.com isn't that right jack absolutely yeah and i had a chance to actually um read this book in an advanced copy when during our time working with comicbookinvest.com, we helped to market their variant program. So I, this is a book that I actually think is a fun book with potential now. It, it's one of those first issues where you don't get everything, but it, it starts the story off. And like a lot of vault releases, I think fun is the word to describe it. Now, again, the premise of it's almost like Star Wars with a little bit of like, um, kind of, I keep going to Guardians of the Galaxy, and I, and it's I not said Ice what, Pirates on the last call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you did, and it's not the it's Guardians isn't the way Vault markets it, but it feels to me like I know that they're going for like that um, kind of Han Solo feel, but it feels a little uh, Peter Quill to me, um, and, but I and in, a good, in the best possible way. So this is a book I think is going to be fun. I'm excited to kind of read this series in general i really like they the book in the middle you see the love that's love and rockets homage if you're not familiar with love and rockets it's one of the most kind of like classic iconic independent comics uh it's you know it's not maybe extremely well known by the mainstream but it's kind of cool to see an indie publisher homage another indie book and I, I'm really proud of the work that we did with comicbookinvest.com to put together the heist Jack Kirby homage, uh, the very first Eternals homage that's ever been done on the market. Um, and that's something to be proud of. Shout out to Ben C., the owner of comicbookinvest.com, 
for having kind of the foresight to see the possibility in that. So if you want that book, that is available on comicbookinvest.com right now. Then the next book we're going to talk about on the reader buzz is X-Force number one. This had a bunch of covers for it. I started to read this, didn't get to finish it yet, but looking forward to, (laughs) but I am looking forward to finishing reading this. Like I said before, I was a big fan of the previous X-Force series. Enjoyed reading that. Wasn't a big, huge X-Men title fan, but I always enjoyed X-Force. So I'm looking forward to finishing this issue up. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned that, Brian, because um, I was having some discussion with our Simple Ones Comics uh, family Patreon members. And I said, you know, I've been kind of underwhelmed with the X-Books. I think um, it's one of those things, and that's not to be negative. I think that there's definitely some books, like I know a lot of people liked Excalibur. So I, I, I can go with that. But I said, when we came out of House of X, Powers of X, the biggest thing that was going to need to happen was how do you spin off these books, right? How do you make the individual X books? Because there's so many, they need to carry weight or else all of that momentum ends up being for naught. Having said that, X Force is getting that serious buzz. People are loving this book, Brian. And and that's good to see. And but I think it's also typical of what we see because you mentioned you're not a big X fan, right? You didn't read you're not a big X-Men fan. I'm I'm a traditional X-Men fan. Um, I love those that blue and gold team. Having said that, I think all of us, even non-X fans like Brian, tend to gravitate towards X-Force. They're kind of cool. They're kind of badass. And I think that that's where a lot of the kind of interest comes from. So this was a great read. There's some variants of note that we need to talk about. The 1 in 50 Adi Granov variant. I love that selling, Yeah, me too. But it's not selling extremely well. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier the 3 up, 3 down show. I think Adi Granoff could very easily be on the down portion of that show. There was a time when you and I, in our speculation, I'll say careers, we knew we could buy any Granoff variant for ratio and you could double your money. Those days are long gone. And I think it's overexposure. And I also think that the market's just moved on. There's new people like In Hyuk Lee who have just kind of captured the newer comic buyers attention but i can't help but still gravitate towards adi granoff variants i still think that they're gorgeous i just think you have to be a more discernible buyer and kind of wait out that initial push of the book where you can buy them low now hidden gem variants have started to become more and more popular that one in 100 todd mcfarlane i think is amazing yeah and they're not, not they're not it, so hidden anymore <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and they're starting to they're starting to get some attention. Um, and I know that the actual artists of them, I think they're not big fans of them because if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard that they're not getting paid for them because it's like old artwork that was already purchased. That um, makes sense. So yeah, so I think there's been some ire in the marketplace with some of the artists, but I could be wrong. Um, that's just some of the talk that I have heard. But I think that that McFarlane variant is really cool. And again, you know, I'm a Todd McFarlane fan, and you don't see Todd McFarlane Marvel books too often, so it's it's pretty cool to see one. I like his depiction of Wolverine, so that one in one hundred variant is is one I'm going to keep my eye on and hope that it kind of drops a bit because right now it's hovering around ratio, maybe a little bit more. And then of course we've got the Frankie's variant on the bottom right, that X Force variant. Love the way he took that X Men x23 cover um a lot of people kind of gave him hell initially saying that they were reposing that x-men red cover that was really successful but they were impatient anyone who was you know being negative about that book they did not wait to see this x-force book where you get the reverse side and you get to see x23 facing forward i think that's the first time i've ever seen two covers one being a front and back of the same image i think that is unique and again that's why we feel very proud to represent frankie's comics right here in the youtube comic community because constantly innovating constantly doing things that are outside the box right and that is available on frankiescomics.com there's that trade dress version they also have a virgin version and full disclosure like he said Frankie's Comics, we do partner with them. They are a channel sponsor, so that's why we're also talking about that book. Not only because they're a sponsor, but because we love those covers, and that's why we want to let other people know about them as well. 
Then the next book on the reader buzz is New Mutants number one. I think I have a majority of the covers up here. I didn't get them all just because there's a lot of covers. You know how Marvel is. Right, and you see a, a lot of uh, um, heavyweight cover artists in this one too, of course. Now Arthur Adams did, like I think, a 1 in 50 variant. But most of the talk has been about that art germ magic variant. And you see that on the lower left with the trade dress version, which of course is like a cover B style order all you want, regular priced variant. Um, I don't expect that one to have a lot of secondary market success, but the one in 200 version variant um, that is definitely for you, those big dog variant buyers out there um, looking to drop some serious coin. Having said that, we've talked about this on the channel, a lot of those high ratio variants have tended to drop below ratio. Um, and then the sneaky variant that we didn't talk about with X-Force, but I'm gonna talk about now, is that every mutant ever variant I really think um, that sets of that are going to do very well. And that lets me segue into another piece of uh, promotion for the channel. Be on the lookout for a new video series coming soon called Set the Table, where we are going to talk about sets. Could be variant sets, could be mini series sets. But the value of collecting uh, and putting together sets, not just for your collection, but also to resell and also the ability to get a little bit extra when you go it's time to resell as well as those hard to put together sets just from the collector perspective and that's coming starting this week right and it's important to know we mentioned on the x-force book that book on the top right is another adigunov variant and that is also an exclusive variant from frankie's comics as well so that's available on their site if you're interested in that yeah and that's another amazing variant and then moving into the next book on the Reader Buzz. This is still one of my favorite series to read out of all the business stuff. I love Young Justice. Haven't had a chance to read this copy yet, but I will have read it by the time this video has premiered. Yeah, I love like, Young Justice too. It's one of those books. It's just a fun read. Um, and now with the whole HBO Max deal, I would love to see a Young Justice series. Um, I think they're a little bit of a different take on, say, the Teen Titans, the typical um, teenage team trope. I think we may get Young Justice though, Brian, with that superhero high yeah. series I love, that's coming. I love the cartoon. And then the thing about this issue is you actually have Naomi joining the team, right? Right, and that's the value of this. There's actually this. If it wasn't for the crossover with um, Action Comics, this may be another long-term play candidate. So if you're looking from a speculation perspective, I would say go cover A because Naomi's front and center right on the cover. But that's why this book was buzzing. You don't see Young Justice 9 buzzing on the list. You haven't seen 8. This book was buzzing because people were interested about Naomi. And it's funny. Every time we talk Naomi, there's detractors, right, Brian? There's people who say that they're not Naomi fans. But the reality is anytime DC puts Naomi in a book, people are talking about it. So there's something there with this character. Right. And then the last book in the reader buzz section, we get that somewhat finale right that city of bane and batman 82 yeah and i gotta tell you man i liked this issue you read this issue too what did you think about this i liked it it kind of reminded me of um an old standoff i mean it was basically take spoiler alert by the way but it was basically like hey we're gonna take off the cow we're gonna take off everything we're just gonna go mano a mano except for <laughs> batman kind of lied a little bit <laughs> Yeah, you, and you know what it reminded me of? You know when you're like, you see two guys at the bar, and they're they're squaring up, and they're gonna fight, and then one guy immediately rips his shirt off, and it's like, no, we gotta fight shirtless. That's kind of, that's kind of what it reminds. Then the other dude's me girl of. jumps in. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it reminded me of. Because you know they take the cowl off. Bane looked kind of weird without the mask on. Um, I'm more of a fan of Mexican luchador Bane yeah. myself, but. Um, yeah, this guy looks yeah, like so, prison, prison Bane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is like neo-Nazi Bane. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so Bane and Bruce Wayne are going to square off. Like you mentioned, you know, Bruce Wayne lies and uh, Selena Kyle is going to get involved in the fray. They fight one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-one. It's a handicap match. But that's not even the big thing. It's the fact that at the end, we see Thomas Wayne show up uh, in his version of Batman. <laughs> yeah. And he shoots Batman, Bruce Wayne, in the stomach. 
and then he appears to shoot Bane in the head. Now, it's one of those, like, tough panels where it's yeah. like, I'm pretty sure that's what happened, but there's wiggle room with it. So I don't want to say Bane's dead, right? I don't want to go, you know, pull an Alfred or more like pull a Donatello where you say, like, he's dead and he's not. Um, we don't know yet, but it, that was certainly a shocking ending. So it looks like we're going to get, for the next square off, Thomas versus Bruce. And I'm all in for that one. I think that's going to be fun. And again, my guy Tom King, I think, is delivering on this. I know I know, people were skeptical. but yeah. <laughs> And I want to make one more point, too. The acetate cover. Um, I think the acetate covers are very cool. From a collector perspective, by the way, it's going to be hard to get those in 9.8 because they're going to scratch very easily. Yeah. But I thought... I think no one was talking about the acetate covers. I hadn't heard anybody talking in the market about these covers, and I think they they came off very cool. Yep. So that's going to wrap up the reader buzz section, and we're just going to go right on into the variant buzz. Keep it rolling. And first book we're going to talk about on the variant buzz is that Spawn 300. This is actually the third print cover, though. Right, and you know what? I mean, we can be brief. We've talked about Spawn 300 a lot. You get that cameo appearance of the new She-Spawn. But the real value of this is the fact that this is going to have a lower print run than the other printings. Spawn collectors are completionists. And this one has some solid long-term potential. Uh, it's you know it's a higher cover price book, so that kind of hurts it a bit. But at the same point, um, I could see this one being a book five years from now as a ghost. And people paying big money for it. And as much as I almost get sick to my stomach to see ASM 300 homages at this point, there are people that love them. Well, and it's always different when it's actually Todd McFarlane doing it. <laughs> yeah, he has the right. Yeah, it's like, all right, you get a pass. <laughs> yeah. But the next book on the Variant Buzz, we're talking about this Yandu. We talked about Hen Jim. I... Haven't read the story, but just the cover alone, the freaking throwback to the old was it the Mar was it Marvel Tales? Was it Marvel Tales? Marvel special? Uh, Marvel. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, what was it? Mar they did it and then they reprinted it. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Tales. It was I think it was like it was one of the super specials yeah. or the Marvel Comics Presents. Um, that and it's that original Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. I love with the overlay of the old school Yondu on it. Yeah, with the big Yandu trade dress, very cool. Like this thing, honestly, I had no interest really in a Yandu series. Um, I dig Michael Rooker Yandu, but like I, you know, I could live without a solo comic series. Having said that, this variant is freaking sweet. Um, this is one of those ones that just pops on cover art, and it's a good week for hidden gem variants. Yeah, it would be. It's like Marvel did. A prism trading card and this is like one of those refractors i mean that's kind of how it pops to me yeah yeah it really does next one we have on variant buzz is the absolute carnage immortal hulk number one this is the second print i like this cover as well and this one gives me kind of like that uh sam keith max exactly. feel to it once you mentioned it because i was like this reminds me of something but yeah that's kind, of, that's kind of the feel you get, right, when you look at it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously the, the draw to this is the fact that you get that Venomized Hulk. Although we know from the Absolute Carnage story that that doesn't last long. Um, the, you know, he gets the Codex kind of sucked out of him. Um, pause. But, yeah, so, you know, I think the car, it's, this is the typical move, right, Marvel does, where you get kind of like the first – you have like a first appearance or, you know, a big appearance in a book. And then you get that second print with the cover art change with that character that everybody wants on the cover. This book sold out at large retail. I think it's a tougher to find book than a lot of people imagined. And I, mostly because a lot of retailers still have Absolute Carnage and Mortal Hulk number one on their shelves. So they don't feel the need to order the second print. So this one will be interesting to see. People have already moved on to Spider Hulk. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what this holds long term. But cool cover. Yeah. Will we get another uh, well sought after Booger Green later printing Hulk comic? <laughs> yeah. Time will tell. But the next one, Future Fight Crescent and EO number one. This was what the uh, one in one hundred variant in Hawk Lee. Right. One in one hundred. We've seen two of these be released so far. 
with uh, White Fox and Luna Snow, both of them go well over ratio just due to the, you know, who's ordering 100 copies? You know, who's ordering us? And this character, especially Brian, who's ordering 100 copies of Crescent and EO? Yeah. Um, or IO. I don't know how you pronounce that. Please don't shoot me out there. Simpleman's Comics family. But, um, you know, it, this is one of those things where I could see this one being worth more because it's rare, but I could see it being worth less because there's less interest. But uh, it's one of those things time will tell. Either way, I think that these Inhyuk Lee variants, you want to talk about setting the table? This is a tough set. You want to put this one in 100 set together, you're going to drop some coin. And then, that was another thing I was going to talk about when we talk about sets a lot. This is one of those sets, though, if you're looking at as a seller, I don't think you want to sell as a set because you'll lose money on because most people that are going to want to look at for a set for these 1 in 100 variants, you're not going to get as much money as selling them single because they command so much money. Everyone would look for a deal on a set. So if you got three 1 in yeah. 100s, they're going to probably be looking for a 275, 250 cut me a deal because I'm buying all these off of you. But from a collector standpoint, like you said, this is a set that would be great to have, especially if you can get these under ratio. Yeah, and you're not getting those first two under ratio at this point. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think you're looking like there was like a $400 sale of that uh, Luna Snow. So I think at this point, these books are ghosts. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see, though, if they hold their value or if it's one of those things like those Jen Bartel Marvel Tales variants where it's just a short run. Exactly. Then the next one of the variant buzzes is that Spawn 302. This is the McFarlane trade dress and then that McFarlane Virgin variant. Right. You know, I got to say, A, I like this cover. Um, B, I think that the, the desire behind this cover um, is the fact that you get She Spawn on the cover. I kind of um, like the trade dress version better, actually. Just from. And I, I can. Yeah, I can see where you're at with that. And. Um, just because it has like that I, movie poster type look, almost like I like the aesthetic of it better, I guess. Well, yeah, and I mean, I've said this before on the channel, man. I'm not like the biggest Virgin variant fan. I like the fact that it showcases the art, but I'm a marketer, so I'm also a fan of the trade dress because there's so much you can do with the trade dress to sell a book. I think the yellow in the trade dress pops. I love the black kind of border on it i love how the yellow plays off the bottom yellow where they're advertising the fact that todd mcfarlane is doing interiors in this book which is something he has not done for quite some time on spawn so yeah i like this book and i tend to agree with you, brian i like that trade dress better i think for value sake people will gravitate towards the virgin variants um but I, I again i don't i don't love that there's you know that's why we see like store retail uh retailers do like exclusives with just the virgin cover um and it, it sometimes it makes the cover pop and sometimes it takes away from it a bit right there's a time and place for everything <laughs> well that's like one thing i never understood is why were sketch variants more expensive i'm like wait a minute you want to pay more money and pay half ass the damn cover <laughs> right 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 and they i there's very few that you ever look at and go well that's better there's some where it's like man jim lee like jim lee oh <laughs> man see see yeah. you, if you can see that jim lee line work you're like oh that's incredible yeah but yeah but moving on we're going to talk about once in future number one we've been told this is the last seventh print last print of number one yeah but we were told that about six right <laughs> so um here's here's the deal boom did say the sixth was the last print and their intention was to overprint that book so that any store that needed a copy to sell to a reader could get it but guess what you animals did out there you bought them all up <laughs> So they had to come back with the seventh print so that they would have something for the shelves like that. Brian, I wouldn't be shocked if this didn't get bought up the same way. Um, having said that, this book is still available for cover price most places. So I think thus far, it seems like this one's going to hold true and possibly be the last print. 
you know, but we never know. It seems like Once in Future is in a battle with Dai to have the most printings, with Dai just announcing a new new printing of of uh, Dai number one. So Yeah, that we'll special ha- print, right? Or special printing. Yeah, yeah, the special edition type, whatever they want to call it, so that they can print out more. But the, there seems to be a Once in Future versus Dai battle. But similar story with this is what the next book we're going to talk about. Right, and the next book we're talking about is Something is Killing the Children, number one. This is the fifth print. Right, same sort of situation. I think they intended on the fourth being the final printing. Got bought up. Um, and so now we get a fifth print, and the, these are intended to be for readers. These are intended to be for the people who are like trying to catch up. Prime example with this book is, and I'm not going to pronounce his name because I'm going to butcher it, but Damien... The guy who who was behind Lost with J.J. Abrams and he's doing the uh, um, the Watchmen show. He just did with Collider a um, that that YouTube series where they go into the comic shops, right, and they they pick up comics and they talk about comics and their projects. And they do it at Golden Apple Comics in uh, Los Angeles, California. And the guy who hosts the show now, um, he after the previous host passed away, unfortunately, rest in peace, but he grabs Something's Killing the Children number two and gives it to him. He goes, you know, it's a great series. He's telling them about it, but you know, he's like, yeah, number one's all sold out. So, you know, it's kind of tough to jump in on a series with issue two, especially this series. So that's why this book is necessary because comic shops need to have these on the shelves if they want to sell their issue twos and threes and fours. They need to be able to say, oh, you, you're late on this. You haven't checked this out. Well, I got an issue one right here. So this is the value in these late printings, which, again, another shameless plug. We have another new show starting this week, um, Better Late Than Never, which is going – this video series is going to talk about late printings. And it's going to talk about from a value standpoint and just just from a highlighting some of these kind of rare late printings that a lot of times people are not aware of. In the very first uh, video in this series, we're going to talk about Donny Cates' first Appearances, books that feature a first appearance of a character Donny Cates created and the late printings associated with that book. Right, and also talking about Boom and these later printings on their first issues. They got a book that's getting ready to come out that I think is going to follow this same scenario. We're talking about Folklords. Did have a chance to read an advanced copy of that. I'm super excited for it. I'm Speculation aside... If you love fantasy and you love those epic, I'm talking about what I say, Dungeons and Dragons meets the village as far as yes. when I read it. Great story. Great first issue. And we got that coming out. What is it? Next week? The, um... Next ne- next week. Yeah. And, and it's funny because like when we talked about this book months ago, I, we made that joke. We said, get ready. Be on the lookout. Folklords, folklords, folklords. You know, we were, and we were very yeah. braggadocious to be talking about that one pre-FOC. Um, but it seems like that one's the next up already solicited the second print. So, uh, you know, that book's already sold out at distributor level in the first print. You got cover a, a cover B, a Dan Mora cover C FOC variant, a black and white one in 25 incentive variant. Something we didn't see with these two books is an incentive variant. And there's a one per store. Thank you variant, which we just found out about today. Right. So, yeah, if you've liked Once in Future and you like Something's Killing Children, I'm pretty sure you like Folklords. And if you have read Something's Killing Children or Once in Future and didn't like it, let us know in the comments because everyone I've talked to that's read it has enjoyed it just as much. But, yeah, let us know. It wasn't for you. It wasn't for you. But we're, we're anxious to yeah. hear what people think because I love all those stories and Folklords is right up there with it. So, I'm not just sitting there trying to sell books. I'm letting you know. If that's if you like those type of stories, you're definitely gonna to want to be picking that book up. No, yeah, er, and Erica Slaughter from Something's Killing the Children is quite possibly my favorite new character that's been created within the last year or two. If she was a Marvel character, we'd be talking super buzz on that first appearance. Yep. And that wraps up the variant buzz. So that just leaves what? Jax. That long term play of the week. Long term play. And what are we going to talk about for the long-term play this week? I'm telling you right now, we are going to talk about Immortal Hulk number 26. Now, before I let Jack talk about this, we were talking about this before the show. He's read it. 
I didn't get to read it. He couldn't say enough good things about it. He kept telling me, you got to read this book. Jack, let the viewers know why they need to read this book and why it's your long-term play. Well, I know everybody's excited about Immortal Hulk, right? Immortal Hulk is awesome. So when I say this, it may sound like a negative thing. But this is kind of a departure from the kind of tone of the Immortal Hulk series. But again, not in a bad way. This feels like World War Hulk 2. Uh, you see Bruce Banner gearing up for something big. This is There's a revolution going on. It also it reminds me of everything that's cool going on in comics, right? Think about the Joker movie, right, where we've got the Jokers, where the citizens are putting the masks on, and they're inspired by Joker. Here you've got, like, guys with green hoodies out in the streets rioting, causing trouble um, in support of the Hulks. Uh, you've got Bruce Banner kind of laying out this master plan of, you know, how he thinks that, you know, he needs to start this revolution. Um, you get to see an interaction between Bruce Banner and Amadeus Chow as Braun, which I think is real cool. Seeing them bring Braun into this story. Namor's in this story. Doc Samson's in this story. Um, this is one, like, I'm excited for. The solicitation kind of laid it on thick, saying, like, Bruce has his henchmen. Um, it, more than henchmen, it really seems like, like I said, this is World War Hulk. We're kind of setting up for a civil war, and you've got to kind of pick which side you're on. And this story, this issue set is kind of like the prologue to set up this story. And from a speculation perspective, no, there's no first appearance in here. There's no um, major death, right? There's nothing that you would typically say this is why you should be grabbing this book. But Reader Buzz has proven proven to be able to drive value in sales in 2019. I think this story is going to be a smash. And that's what I was telling Brian before this show started. I said, this book is amazing. I can't recommend it enough. I loved it. It was my favorite read of the week. I had to talk about it in detail. So it had to go into this place. And I think that it will be the type of book that will actually creep up in value quite substantially over time because I think people, again, promote the show set the table. I think people are going to put sets of this arc together. Um, and think about the last issue. We just had that big issue 25, that double issue. Retailers went heavy on that issue. This one came, got solicited right after it. How many times, Brian, have we seen this type of issue be under-ordered because a lot of people thought issue 25 was going to be the last issue. A lot of people were maybe not anticipating this. There's no variant for this book. Just this cool Alex Ross cover. Um, and yes, guess what? I think that's why this issue is kind of perfect. Great story. I'm engaged and ready to read the next issue. Awesome cover. I think it'll have a lower print. And no variants. So there's just one cover to choose from. So it's either find it on the shelf or... You know, you're going to be out and you're going to have to hit that secondary market. So we'll see. I expect to see later printings coming of this book. But if you've read this book, again, let us know in the comments what you thought about it. If you haven't read this book, cannot recommend it enough. Even if you didn't like Immortal Hulk, I think this is one to check out. And I still love those Alex Ross covers on this title. Uh, incredible. Incredible. This, it, it's hard to say, like, this is, like, his best work because the guy, everything the guy does is amazing. But I'm glad to see like the newer generation of comic fans giving the man his due because he's been killing it in the game for just so many years. Right. So that's going to wrap up Jack's long-term play. I will bring the bolo list back up on the screen again. Again, we went over the first appearances, reader buzz, variant buzz, and the long-term play. Like we always say, this list is you, the user, the community, Simple Men's Comics family. Everyone, this is your list. We're the guardians of the list. Jack just... Jack's the scribe who puts it all to paper, but because of you guys and the noise you make on social media and letting people know what's going on, that's what goes on this list, right, Jack? Absolutely. So make sure also tomorrow night, 9 p.m., we do have a new episode of The Last Call. That's where we talk about Books heading final order cut off this coming Monday night. Those orders need to be in Monday night, 10 p.m. Eastern. But we're going to give you our 10 picks tomorrow night, Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
Yeah, we talk about that. That's our favorite show. We get to sit back, have a couple of adult Kool-Aids, and talk to you guys about what we see from that previews list, pre-FOC, and kind of just let you know what we're liking. And we always love to hear what you guys are interested in. Right. And if this is the main video you watch coming up this weekend, I do want to say, one, happy birthday to my brothers and sisters in the United States Marine Corps this Sunday, November 10th, celebrating 244 freaking years of my beloved Marine Corps. And of course, Monday, November 11th, we have Veterans Day. So I want to thank everyone that wore, put on the uniform, served this country, protected the freedom. Not everyone could be a Marine, so we still bless you and we thank you for your service. But appreciate it either way, and good night.